Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for on-site training, code reviews, and contracting. In this episode, I thought that I would mention a debugger that I had recently become aware of that is designed for our Unix environments and wraps GDB with a lot of interesting extra tools. So I'm going to demonstrate it now probably be a pretty quick episode, but hopefully you'll find it interesting. So in our example here, we just have a simple map of strings to integers, that is all, and we're going to compile it with debugging symbols, and then we're going to launch it in the debugging GUI that I just mentioned. So we are assigning our values A, B, C, D, E, and F, and then we are reassigning the value in our map that is referred to as A, with a few different values to demonstrate what this debugger is capable of. So I'm compiling with debugging symbols, and then the tool is GDB GUI, and it is installed using pip. It is actually a Python application, and it's really easy to install, so you could just do pip3 install GDB GUI, and it will update it if it needs to and tell us what we have going on here. So I'm going to launch it with GDB GUI and well since we didn't give an output name to our executable when we built it it's just a dot out. So launching this is going to launch a Firefox browser and it tells us that we have an update available which wasn't in pip so it didn't get installed and we are going to go ahead and make this full screen and I'm going to zoom the UI a little bit for the sake of this demo. So we're not going to concern ourselves terribly with the GDB window here but you can see that we can actually see what it's going to be doing along the way and we can type our own GDB commands if we want to. So let's go ahead and launch this. It starts with its breakpoint already here and as you can see we could set our own breakpoints if we wanted to. So I'm going to set one there and there. And now when I tell it that I want to start the program it's going to go ahead and launch it and we're on the first breakpoint. And we can see here that we've got our local variables, our currently running threads, and everything else that you would expect to have from a modern debugger. And for those of us who are really fascinated by what the CPU is doing, we can see all of the registers and we can see all of the registers on our modern Intel architecture here, which is quite a few. But we're not going to worry so much about the actual registers at the moment. So we have our map that is being created right now and we can step over it to the next thing and we can see that the current line that we are debugging has updated here. Now let's go ahead and start exploring our local map variable. So I'm going to put that in our expression list and we're going to expand this and it doesn't have anything in it yet. But as we step over each thing, we can actually see the items get added. So an interesting thing to do is we can do something like this. We can graph what the current value is at position A. And we see that it is currently 1.0. And as you can see here, I've reassigned this value several times. So let's go ahead and keep walking through our code. And when we get here to the next breakpoint, we can see it's still 1 and then 2 and 3, 4, and then coming back down to 3, 2, and minus 10. So that's pretty darn cool. I know I am not the most experienced person with IDEs and graphical kind of debugging tools, and I rarely demonstrate those on the channel, but I liked that. And the fact that something like this is so easy to use and so easy to set up on your Unix system and just launches in a web browser, definitely worth checking out. Now, since we always like to talk about the Compiler Explorer and the disassembly and such in our projects here. Now, we have a little bit of a issue with the fact that we built with no optimizations at all and with debugging symbols turned on, and that was partially just so that we could make sure we could step through this whole thing. But it is possible to fetch the disassembly and actually see what each line of our program is doing. So 
you know, never fear. It is easy to jump into these things since that's what we like to do sometimes here. And since you're probably used to seeing the Intel version, you can go ahead and hit that and switch actually between Intel and AT&T. So it was already on Intel syntax. Um, so there you go. This is a pretty lightweight intro to using this debugger, but it has all kinds of things like being able to visualize the trees that you have in your data structures if we did have a tree in our data structure, and being able to easily walk through all of the different values that we currently have in our local stack, expressions, and breakpoints. So uh, check it out. This is GDB GUI, and it is free, and it is on GitHub and free for commercial and open source projects according to its license. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.